Psalms chapter 127, verse number 1. Psalms chapter 127, verse number 1. Get into the Bible study this morning. Amen. Psalms 127, verse number 1. We've been going through in the Sunday school hour teaching about the home, home on the rock, uh, the rock being Jesus Christ, and talking about uh, building a good home and keeping our homes uh, secure in Jesus. And, what, and, and just in this, in this day and age, the, the world is out to destroy the home. The, the devil's out to destroy the home. He's out to destroy uh, uh, as an adult, and, and he's out to destroy not just the homes that are already established, but the devil's out trying to destroy homes that are trying to be established. I believe with all my heart that the devil is after the young people, the young adults, the college students, the teenagers, trying to take away and tear away the home in our society. That's why in America we have this, now the, the government is suing, or not suing, but taking away from North Carolina, I don't know if you've seen that, all their funding because of the law that they made. You know why? That's the, that's the world trying to take away the home. Right. They're trying to take away our home. You know why? Because without a good home, America is nothing. If we don't have good homes, good, strong moms and dads that train up children to love the Lord, then America is just going to fall by the wayside. But that's because the devil is attacking the home. I believe that with all my heart. And so we're teaching on Sunday school on the home and focusing on keeping our, our, our homes, our marriages, our children, trying to strengthen those homes and strengthen our homes and put up those guards to keep the devil from coming in. Today we're going to learn about the strength of the structure depends upon its foundation. The strength of the structure of the home depends upon its foundation. In other words, we're trying to build a good home. I'm trying with my wife and Adlin, we're trying to build a good solid home. But to build a home, we have to have a good foundation. If you don't have a good foundation where you start, then it doesn't matter what you build, it's going to fall. It's like the Bible says, the story of the wise man that built his house upon the rock and the foolish man built his house upon the sand. You can build the most beautiful house in the world, but if you build it on a shaky foundation, it doesn't, it, it'll fall. But you build a house, you can build a shack, but you build it on a rock. And it'll stay. Amen. And so it's not about the home as much as it is about the foundation, building that foundation. And, you know, and, and also we have to remember, too, just because maybe we start out right, we have to revisit that foundation. Foundations can crack. Foundations can get uh, where if we're not careful, we neglect that foundation and we don't we have to reestablish we can sometimes get away from these foundational truths so it's good to revisit these things even though maybe we've started out that way we have to revisit that and re-strengthen ourselves to trust on this foundation so like psalms 20, 127 is kind of our theme except the lord build the house they labor in vain that build it except the lord keep the city the watchman waketh but in vain so number one today on the structure depends upon its foundation Building your home on Jesus Christ is foundational. So we know this. Building our home on the Lord Jesus Christ is foundational. 1 Corinthians 3, 1, or 3, 11 says, For other foundation can no man lay that is, than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. A Christian marriage means more than just that both parties are Christians. Sometimes uh, when, uh, when, uh, if I'm dealing with couples, just because maybe both Maybe the husband and wife, just because they're saved, does not mean you're building yourself on the Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes we think, well, because I'm a Christian, it just means that everything falls together. No, it takes work. We have to focus in and determine to build our homes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just because we're Christians doesn't mean that we always make the right decision. Amen. Only when we yield ourselves individually and then together will we be able to enjoy the benefits of a Christian marriage? So in other words, it takes two working together to build that home on Christ. If one is uh, worried about going to church and being faithful to church, but then the other spouse gets to where, well, we can maybe skip here or maybe we can do this, then what you're doing is you're, you're, you're causing a, a divide there. You have to agree together to keep that home foundational. Amen. How can two walk together except they be agreed, the Bible says. So we have to agree together as a husband and a wife that we're going to stay faithful to church, that we're going to do the principles of God's Word. Just Again, just because we're Christians does not mean we are yielded to the Lord. 
we have to make a conscious effort individually to yield ourselves to God, and then together we yield ourselves to say, we're going to do this right. And it doesn't matter whether it's a marriage that's just started or a marriage that's been, been established for 25 years, brother. Amen? And uh, happy, happy anniversary, by the way, again, the 18th. Uh, it doesn't matter if your marriage has been 25 years or for my wife and I, it'll be this, this, this next August, two years. Amen? It goes by fast, and I can't believe it. But what, it doesn't matter when, we have to determine to keep our homes built on Jesus Christ. Because whether your home has been around for a while or whether it's just started, the devil is going to try to attack the foundation. Because the devil knows if he can get at your foundation, then he can tear down the rest of the building. Amen. It doesn't matter what you've built. Amen. So keep the foundation, Jesus Christ. Our home has to be built around the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of times uh, I have... I have friends I ha I've seen as a, now as a pastor, uh, you know, you, when I go and visit, people want, uh, you know, and I knock doors, people want advice. They say, oh, pastor, we're having this trouble, you know, and, and I'm not, you know, and I'm just maybe I just met them one time, you know, but it's because people know that God has not the answer. Amen. People know God has the answer and they just don't know. They want to know what, what is the answer. But the difference is I can give an answer but it's up to the individuals to take it and apply it. So I can teach, but we have to take this home and we have to determine this is what we're going to do. There is no substitute to God being the foundation in your home. No substitute. The happy Christian home is something that Christ works out in us. We, cannot, uh, we can't work up the benefits of a Christian marriage. We can't just, you know, it just, it just happens. No, we have to work at it. Uh, sometimes we think that, well, if we just, if we just go to church one, one Sunday a week and we just uh, maybe do this or that, that it'll just, it'll just happen. No, you know, a Christian home, it takes effort, takes work together, and it takes that constant uh, building your life upon that Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, being faithful to church, loving God, being a soul winner, being in your Bible, and working at it to, uh, to, work, to get these benefits of a Christian marriage. It's kind of like, uh, you know, we have, there's all these quick, quick rich schemes out there. You ever, you ever had somebody get, you like those scam emails, you know, get rich quick things? I get them all the time, and uh, I, I think it's because, you know, when I, when I first got an email address, you know, you put your email out there for uh, if somebody sends you, hey, you can win this $100 gift card or something. You know, I'm like, oh, hey, I'll take that. <laughs> and uh, then I was like, where do I get all this scam stuff? But everybody's out to get rich quick because America has gotten to where we don't want to put the effort into something that's worthwhile. We just want it now. Amen. We don't want to have to make a million dollars by working hard all our lives. We want that million dollar check from the lottery that's what america's about america is it, that's why we have fast food america doesn't want to have to go home and take 30 45 minutes to cook a meal anymore we want to be able just to go to mcdonald's now brother let me tell you chicken nuggets are good stuff hey, amen i love them chicken nuggets barbecue sauce for all you uh ranch and uh and honey mustard fans Whoa. Hey, amen chick-fil-a sauce hey, amen Woo! And there's, nothing, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with those things. But what it is is you're seeing the mentality of America to where we no longer want to put effort into something. We want to just have it. We want to have the benefits now. We just want the benefits now. God says in a Christian marriage, it's going to take time. And it's going to take work. It doesn't happen overnight. You're going to have to be faithful to the Lord. Be faithful in your Bible reading. Be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ and allow Him to work, and, and give yourself to the Lord. Number two, so the first thing is building your home on Jesus Christ is foundational. Number two, obedience to Christ is foundational. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If ye abide in me, John 15.7, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. If we seek God's way... Above all else, he has promised to add to us all these things. These things refer to our needs. And one of our greatest needs as individuals in a marriage is for a strong home relationship. God says, if you'll seek him first, 
if you'll put God first and you'll obey Christ, then God will add to you all these things. God will add. It's like our church. If we put Christ first, we give God the preeminence, then God will add to the church these things. God will take care of us. In a home, it's the same way. Christians want to have a strong relationship with their children. We want to have a strong relationship with our wives. We want to have a strong relationship with the pastor and the church and, and put God first. Well, then what you do is you seek first the kingdom of God. That means in everything, you put Jesus first. You give him the preeminence. You obey Christ. So it, what happens is we, we get to where in America, if we're not careful, our priorities get messed up, and we allow other things to take priority over God. And that's where America's messed up. We did that in the public school. We pushed God out of the public school. We pushed prayer out of the public school. Look where the public school is. In a marriage, what's different? If, we're, if we push God out of a marriage long enough, that's why we have problems. We can't push God out even for a time and say, well, God, I don't have time today. I'll, I'll have to read my Bible tomorrow. Well, then I promise you that's the day you're going to have a lot of difficulty. Amen. Because you've got to get Christ involved. You've got to seek God first. It's the same for your children. You have to put God first in front of your children so that your children know no matter what happens with mom and dad, Christ is first. If something comes up and it's Sunday night, Christ is first. We're in church. I know uh, my mom and dad, we had times where uh, they, we had lots of opportunities to do things. Dad was invited, yeah, you know, pastor in town. He gets invited to do all, speak here, do this, do that, all those things. And Dad told us kids, he said, "Kids, God's first. And we made a he made a commitment, and he made a principle out it out of it. It didn't matter what came up, we were in church, amen. And it taught me as a young man, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what happens. Dad's going to be in church. And it wasn't just because Dad was a pastor, because Dad wasn't a pastor till he was later on in life. I was nine years old when we moved to Hutchinson. I can remember before then, Dad is a bus captain and as a deacon, Jesus was first in everything. Amen. And in our homes, that has to become the, the theme, that it's Christ first, that we, put our, we organize our homes around the church. See, what this world wants, America wants the church to organize themselves around the home. We want the church to, to, to come to our schedule. That's why they don't have church on Sunday nights anymore some places. Well, we don't have time for Sunday night church, so they just did away with it. Now some have home groups, which is unbiblical. You go to church, amen? But that's because America has got to where our homes are well, the church needs to come around my home. If it doesn't fit around the home schedule, well, then I'm sorry, church will have to wait. God says if we want to build strong homes, we have to seek first the kingdom of God, not seek first ourselves. So we have to take our homes, whether, again, whether it's a home that's just started, like myself, or a home that's been 25 years, we have to make up our minds that we're going to build our homes around the church. That will build you a strong foundation. You take any Christian that has, t has made it a priority to build their home around the church, you'll see a successful home. You take any Christian that's ever made it a priority to build the church around their home, where if it fit into their home schedule, they did it with the church. If not, they put that aside. I promise you, they've had problems. It never fails. Never fails. I've not been a pastor for very long, but I've been in church work all my life. And I have watched time after time my dad give advice and he tell people, this is what you do. And they didn't do it. And I've watched divorce after divorce after divorce after divorce. After, I can't even count on one hand. After divorce, after problem, after problem. And as a kid, you're up at the church late. Dad's in his office. We're, uh, in, the, we're in the auditorium sleeping on the pew. Amen. You know Why? Because dad had to counsel somebody because he told them, this is what you need to do. They didn't do it. Now they have a problem. And I'm sitting there as a kid, and I'm not, and I wasn't, very, I wasn't very bright. I mean, I did some pretty dumb stuff. I won't tell you about that now. And don't ask my dad, please, because <laughs> he'll tell you. He doesn't care. But I remember sitting there thinking, you know, if they would just listen. <laughs> but it's easier to do it from the outside in. But I remember, I was like, you know, if they would just listen. But you know what? It's the same with me now. I'm learning. 
if I would just listen to the Word of God, because I've made mistakes, and I think if I would just listen, boy, it'd be, an easy, it'd be easier, amen? Because when we obey Christ, God promises He will add all these things to us. God will give you the strong home that you need when you put Jesus first. God will give you kids that love the Lord and serve God if you seek Him first. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. God will add that to you when you put Christ first in your home. Number three, yielding to the Holy Spirit is foundational. So building the home on Jesus Christ is foundational. And that starts, of course, with salvation. Let me back up there. That starts, of course, with being saved. You have to accept Christ as your Savior. You can't build a home on Jesus and not be saved. This doesn't work. You can't go backwards. Amen. God says, let everything be done decently and in order. Okay? You can't try to come and build on Christ and not have Jesus. It doesn't work. Okay? You, the, 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 the devil is your father, not Jesus, is what the Bible talks about there. You've got to be saved. Accepting Jesus as your Savior, putting your faith and trust in Jesus. After that, you can begin to build on Jesus Christ is foundational. Obedience to Christ is foundational. But then number three, yielding to the Holy Spirit. We've lost in America. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. We've lost in America and in, our Baptist, and in our Baptist churches the concept of yielding to the Holy Spirit of God. We've lost that. Let me, let me show you what we're talking about. Galatians, or I mean Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. God gives us a command to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. When you're saved, you are given the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells on the inside. Hey, Brother Ken, good to see you, sir. How was the crew? Amen. Amen. Anyway, but we are given the Holy Spirit when, when we're saved. So when you get born again, you put your faith and trust in Christ, God gives you the Holy Spirit. But that does not mean that the Holy Spirit now has control. It just means that the Holy Spirit resides in you. He dwells. His home is now in you. But it takes an everyday effort to yield your will to the Holy Spirit's will to do the will of God. That's what the Bible says. It says, uh, under uh, verse 17, it says, Don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You want to understand what God's will for your life is? Then you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You have to be yielded to the Holy Spirit. You have to tell God, Not my will be done, but thine. God, I'm not going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do what you want me to do. In our homes, this is foundational. Because if we would, as individuals, as a husband and a wife, take time every day to yield to the Holy Spirit, then we would not live our marriages in the flesh. We would live our marriages in the Spirit. In other words, when we respond to each other, there would not be the problems. Why? Because when you yield to the Holy Spirit, when you spend time in the Bible and in prayer yielding to the Holy Spirit then you're going to desire to act as Christ would act, not as the flesh. For instance, when problems come up, our flesh, this is our flesh answer. Bring it on. Round one. Ding, ding, ding. The Holy Spirit says, look there in verse 21, submit yourselves one to another. The Holy Spirit says, none of this. The Holy Spirit says, submit to each other. Amen. The world's answer is, Fight it out. Duke it out. That's what the world says. When there's problems in the home, duke it out. They think, argue. You're right. You're right. He's wrong. She's wrong. All of these things. But the Holy Spirit says, no, submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So understanding the Holy Spirit is a key to our homes. Only as we are yielded to the Holy Spirit can we be what God desires for us to be to each other in the marriage. Most of our problems center in rebellion to God's word and God's will for our lives. 
and we excuse this rebellion with the actions of our mate or the hurt that they've caused us. In other words, in our homes, when we're not careful, we're not yielded to the Holy Spirit, we respond a certain way, and then we say, well, if she wouldn't, I wouldn't. But God says when you're yielded to the Holy Spirit, you submit yourself and say, it doesn't matter what my spouse does, I'm going to act as God would have me to act. And imagine the harmony that comes when both spouses say, this is what God has asked me to do, this is what God has asked me to do, and you respond to each other accordingly. Boy, that solved a lot of problems. I know if I was as submitted as I should be to the Lord, I could, save, I could have saved many problems. Amen? We all can. But it's a constant, everyday yielding to the Holy Spirit. We've lost that in America. We've lost the understanding to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. If you want to know God's will for your life, as a, as a marriage, you've got to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. You cannot know God's will on your own. That's why the Holy Spirit was given to you. So you say, God, what's your will? What, what do you want me to do? Where, where does my home need to go? Where, where, what, are we, what, where, what church? What this and that? And how do you want me to lead the home? then you've got to yield yourself every day. Say, Holy Spirit, I need your help today. I need you to guide my home. I need you to watch over my home. If we would just take the time every day to ask for God's help, I believe we could, we could solve many problems and America could be saved. But we go every day, we get out of bed and say, ready or not, here I come. And we go into the day headlong like a bull in a china closet. And then we look it back and go, what happened? Did you start your day off with yielding to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit has been given to the Christian. He indwells the believer. And individually, husbands and wives, we can yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit of God and then together yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit and allow God to take control. Marriage still takes three. The world tries to tell you it takes two. The world will tell you it takes either a man and a woman or a man and a man. That's what they tell you today. That's their definition. But when you get God involved, God says the marriage takes three. It takes a man and woman, and it takes the Lord. We've got to get out of the mindset that it's just me and my wife. No, it takes God. You've got to get God involved every day. Amen. Because the devil's out there looking, the Bible says, shooting the fiery darts at you. He's looking at your home, trying to break up that home. Because God know, the devil knows that if he can break up your home, he breaks up the church, and the gospel is hindered. But if there's strong homes, boy, then the devil's got to fight hard. So expect the devil to fight. He's going to fight. The devil's going to try to get in between you and your wife. The devil's going to try to get you to sin. The devil's going to try to get you to fall. And you're not a better Christian than these men in the Bible. And they fell. David fell. Moses fell. Abraham. They all fell and had problems. You know why? Because it takes God help to do it. David had a time where he was away from the Lord. And he fell hard. God had to pick him back up. I'm no better than David. I'm no better than Paul the Apostle. So I've got to beg God every day, say, God, I'm not as, good of, I'm not as a great of a man of character as these men of God were. And without your help, I'm in trouble. That's how we have to be, yielding to the Holy Spirit. Number four, another foundational key in our home, Ephesians 5, 31 and 32. Ephesians 5, 31 and 32 says, For this cause shall a man... Leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So, the number four uh, foundational piece in our home is involvement with a local church. God, has a st God compares Christ and the church to the, to, the, to the home. Just as you have a time where you come and commit yourselves together and you join together in marriage, is the same thing that happens when we come to church. We come, and we, when we join the church, we commit ourselves to the church. We commit ourselves to Christ. And God says, now, 
we, want, we need to be involved. If you as a couple got married and you committed yourselves to each other but then never did anything together, there's no growth. Imagine if you just, you know, said hi in the morning, went to work, come back at night, said hello, went to bed. You never did anything together, no activity. There'd be no growth. You'd grow, you'd grow apart more than you'd grow together. It, take, it takes time to grow together. It takes time and involvement and concerning yourself with what each other desires and cares for and a man thinks about his wife and, and he says, well, maybe she would like these flowers and you buy her flowers and chocolate and, and uh, wear flowers. Uh, this is what I've decided. I'm going to grow my own flowers from now on. Amen. You go to the store. <laughs> woo, man, I'm growing my own flowers out back. I'm going to put in a garden now. But you try to concern, and then the wife thinks about her husband and says, well, maybe if, uh, let me clean the home. Let me do these things to please my husband. And you want to please each other. You want to involve each other's lives together to please and, and, and enjoy time together. The church is the same way. When we come, we commit ourselves to the Lord, to the church. Now we've got to be involved. Why? Because that's, what, that's where growth occurs. The more involved you are, with the house of God, the more your home will grow. The more involved you are as an individual at the house of God, the more you will grow. God's word and God's house go hand in hand. When we take time, and like Hebrews 10.25 talks about, uh, not uh, forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, you take time and come to the, to the house of God, to the church that you've committed to, God begins to do a work that only God can do at church. There are some things that God only will and can do at the house of God. It's how God's designed it. Amen. That's why we have to make sure we take time, we be involved. If we want a happy home, amen, we have to take time and involve in the house of God. Involve ourselves. That's these are we see that we God compares the two institutions, the home and the church. And God shows that they are intricate intricately entwined in such a fashion that you will only enjoy one completely as you enjoy the other. So notice how God, God established two institutions. God established the home. God established the church. And God has made it to where the two intertwine in such a way that to have a happy home, you have to have church. To have a happy church, you have to have a happy home how God's done it. God wants it that way. Your home will never grow to where it could be without the local church. Won't happen. There's lots of people that try to build a home, but God says it will never grow and flourish to what God would want it to be without the local church. It just won't do it. God, God has a work that only He can do. God established it. God's the one that put it together. Amen. He brought Adam and Eve together. Eve, uh, Eve came forward and God performed the first marriage. Boy, that would have been neat. Have God as the one that says, you're now man and wife. Man. Now, God ultimately does that, yes. But to have Jesus stand there and, and, and be the one there, I think that would have been neat. But God established that. And then God established the church for the home to be involved in. All, all of this is to understand in America, we've lost the importance of church. We've lost the importance of the house of God. We have. You go around and people do not... There's football games on Sunday. There's baseball games on Sunday. Everything's on Sunday now. The world puts everything on Sunday. You know why? They, the devil knows he's trying to take away the family from the house of God. Because the devil knows that without the house of God, you won't have a happy home. And the devil knows that without you at the house of God, you'll never grow, and the house of God can never be what it needs to be. That's why we can't, there can't be this home church. We'll never have that here. You know why? Because that's not how God designed it. God established it as a local called-out assembly. God wants you to come and grow a certain way. America, we've lost it. Well, I'm burdened. I'm burdened. You know why? Go around at 9.30 and drive around town and look at where everybody's going. Boy, people are at McDonald's getting breakfast. People are at the store. People are going to the lake. I was out yesterday because 
uh, before we left, I was going. I went to Walmart real quick to grab some straps because my uh, in-laws gave my wife their old table. They had gotten a new one, and so I got to bring that back and things. And so I was out. And Saturdays are normally the day I had to drive, but normally they're my day to prepare for Sunday. Boy, people are at the store getting ready to go to the lake for the weekend. We're getting ready. They're talking about going to the movies on the weekend. We're doing all, all these things. And I thought, how sad. How sad in America that we've lost the importance of church that now we'll go to the lake and fish over giving God preeminence. And we wonder why America, and we wonder why we have problems with gay marriage now. Because God removes his hand of blessing from the homes when we don't build on that foundation. It's sad. Make a commitment. Husband and wife, make a commitment that you'll always put God first. That you'll always be involved with your church and allow God to work in your home. Don't allow the devil to make you think that it's okay to skip out. Boy, the devil is, is just, it's, it's, it's terrible. But that's why the Bible says at the end times they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They'll hear the truth, but they won't receive it. Let's not let that be, amen. Let's not let that be. We can have revival, but it starts with us putting God first. God will add all those things. All the things you've ever desired in a home, God will add to you. But we have to be willing to put God first. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, for the great Sunday school lesson that we had this morning, Lord. I know that you touched my heart about, Lord, making and putting you first in everything, Lord. There's even things, Lord, that I know in my life that I need to do more at, making more of a focus at, making more of a commitment, endeavoring to, to do more and with my family, with my home, and putting you first and involving ourselves around the local church. Lord, I pray that each of us, husbands and wives and young people, Lord, would make a commitment to always put you first. Lord, there are some here that, Lord, uh, they're, Lord, in the process, Lord, of finding... Lord, that God's will for their life. May you help them to understand, God, that if they'll put you first, that you'll add that to them. You'll help them, Father God, but they've got to put you first. Lord, we've lost that in America. May we always remember that, that, Lord, putting you first is the key, yielding to the Holy Spirit, allowing God to do his work in our lives. Father, Lord, would you help us to do that? I beg that, God, we'd have strong homes in our church that would build the church, Lord, homes that would love you, homes that would desire to... Follow God's word and do God's will, God's way. And, Lord, we can watch the church grow. We can watch, Lord, you do a great work. People be saved, lives be changed, all because, Lord, we just focus ourselves on you, Jesus. May we do that. Thank you, Lord, so much for everybody here this morning. Bless the next hour. Bless the morning service. May all that come, Lord, you'd speak to their hearts. If anybody's here this morning doesn't know that if they die that they'd go to heaven, may they get that settled before the morning's out. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen.